Hello, good morning, and uh, happy Friday. Uh, we're continuing to uh, focus on testing today. Esitsu, hello. How are you doing? How's your day going? Slow progress as usual, but at least like progress is progress, right? I would I would assume that slow progress is better than no progress. Still be. Zilby's just tight. You want to come over? Hi. He's just out of sight. Meowing and complaining. Ah, oh, there it goes. What's up? Oh, you want to go into the closet. That's why. You're not allowed to go in there unsupervised. Okay, so this thing again. Still be high. Okay, so all but one of them passed, just that one. And if I rerun it again, it's fine. Okay, 100% passed. Excellent. So let's close all these up. Okay, so if I remember correctly, we finished working on the the learner tests, and so next up is author tests. So things things that I can do. So let's go ahead and load this up, and I'll log in as an author. Okay, so here we go for this. So we have, um, as an author, landing page, no difference. So I don't need to worry about that. Um, and then we can go to courses page. Again, no difference on here. But I can go into a live course. Let's go into this one here. And I should be able to see and go to the course articles page from the course details. So that'll be the first thing. Uh, so this is end to end test course details. We'll add in a test for here, author. Um, nice, <laughs> nothing in here. So we'll have test, um, an author can uh, navigate to the course details. Uh, it's not course details page, it's the course articles page.
All right, so I guess this doesn't matter which one I go to. So I, I could probably go to like what course one. So courses one. Uh, I go there, and then I should be able to see this course article, so uh, Look for course articles, and we're going to click it. Okay, and then we're going to wait. So, we're going to match. Uh, I think. I think it's slash courses one articles. I think th I think that's what it is. Oh, that failed. Okay, so oh, because it's okay. So it's course articles one. So that's that's what it is. So course articles. Course articles, course, oh, courses articles. Okay. Course articles, courses, one letter. Okay, there we go. So now you're, now you're happy. Uh, so what's next? Guess I might as well wait to make sure it passes everything. Okay, so it does. Uh, this is testing um, author can navigate to the course articles page. All right, so once I'm here, I can now, there's a bunch of things that I can do here. So, I mean, a bunch of things. I, it's one set of things, but a couple things I need to test, right? So I need to test that I can add articles from all articles to assigned. I can then remove them from assigned. And um, that if I refresh, they stay the same. Uh, I don't actually know if I need to test that because the data, that's like a database thing. I think what I really care about is like, okay, if I click on these, they show up over here and then I can hit save. And then the, uh, I guess it just, it shows that I've, I've saved it. So every time I click one of these, it should show up a little message up here saying like, Hey, you've, uh, you've added that article to the course. So let's build that out. So that's going to be, a course articles page all on its own. Which I don't think we have.
Yeah. That's not the right name. All right, I guess we'll do our imports. So import from, uh, this is gonna be playwright test. Uh, and I want, so we'll bring in expect and we'll bring in test. Everything here has to be from an author, so I don't need a describe around it. I can do a before each, so test. And for this, I am going to slash um, course article. Is it course articles or course article? Course, course articles. Course articles, and we'll go to, let's say, one. Um, oh, and that just goes there, okay. Okay, so wait, login for that. We're good to go there. Okay, so that should be everything we need to do in our before each. We can start doing our tests. Okay. Um, the first thing is that I want to add an article to a course. So. I've already gone there, so I should be able to see what the articles are. Uh, I don't think I can have this be empty, can I? And we'll see what it is. Um, oh, it's not, not really a problem. Let's go... Okay, so course ID one has these two articles already associated with it, but I think we have a third article, don't we? So we have ID, so article ID one, article ID two, so we have created in Hasura, cool article five, and then, oh, long article. Okay, so I should be able to click on long article. So, uh, wait, H dot. I think that there are buttons. If I roll. Okay, 
find the article named long article and we'll click it. And then I want to see that. I want to see that over on the left. There's a way there's a way for me to find these. Uh, and I forget how to do it. It's like wait page dot Oh, I start with get by lol roll. The title it's not label. Heading. Okay, so get by heading. And the heading is going to be all articles. And then I think I can get underneath it somewhere. Oh, then I can do another get by. Okay. How do I turn that to get? Uh, this is a get by roll. Okay, so get the heading and then inside of that, get by roll. I think that's what I want to do. And then I want to go see that it exists over on the left. So then, wait, page dot. It by see it's not a title. Uh so I think it's gonna be get by roll heading. And then that oh of course. Signed. Now I search for a button with the name of a uh, long article, uh, and then I want to get the is visible so this is going to be the um long article this is the assigned long article Then we, uh, then we expect that to be true. Okay, so expect that the assigned long article now is true. Let's see if that works. And if it does what we expect it to. Oh, nice. Okay, there was an error getting courses.
I'll have to wait and fart to time out. Because there's no headings. Actually, I can just stop it. Maybe. All right, what happened here? Missing field data at line one. So, okay, error getting courses, missing field data. I have the request and response body doesn't have anything. Oh, I completely forgot to, oh, you know what? That's, that's my bad. I need to also, before I do any of this stuff, we need to await, uh, intercept. Kind of important. There we go. Okay. So there's that long article. You're not finding it. Interesting. Okay. So if I pick locator U, I probably need to wait for it to finish. Okay, so let's get by rule that. What if I want to, okay, get by rule heading, name all articles. A toggle bit rating with a party of 145. Welcome, 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 toggle bit. Uh, and welcome, raiders. Hello, Diablo D3. Hello, hello, Rumil. Um, toggle, how was your raid? I mean, sorry, how was your raid? How was your stream? What are you working on today? And more importantly, do you have to run away? Um, in intra cat, um, is wah, and uh, let's see. Oh, um, he was trying to learn how rust lifetimes work. Toggle knows lifetimes, I think it was more of like trying to show, show some more like interesting ones, right? That's what I would imagine. I know it's a, it's hard for me to see, like, try to pronounce that and convert that. Oh, you're right. We ha everybody has to wah if if we're rating or at least toggles. Does anybody really know how Rust lifetimes work? I mean, there there are a few that I would say yes, but maybe us, maybe not. Kevin, uh, with another wah, a Korean streamer fall last time pronounced it. Int uh. Intra one two. I don't know where the two comes from, but or the two, uh, the intra one. Okay, I say I can get that, but then the K. I see the K and I see the four. I'm like maybe the four is an A because you like sort of like a tilted A. And I was like, okay, maybe that's what you're going for. 
I mean, okay. Yes, I'm old enough to I'm old enough that I should be able to understand Leet speak, but that's assuming that back then I was able to understand Leet speak to begin with. I was not very good at that. Something to do with chickens, right? Yes, uh, lifetimes and chickens, something, something like that. Uh, Zilby, welcome back. Uh, you would have pronounced it intricate. Well, that's probably a more appropriate way to do it. Intricate. Now, now that I look at it, it's like that makes more sense. That makes more sense. Uh, okay, so. We'll assign a training module to you once it's done. Well, th thank you for that. I'll, I'll be sure to install that when I'm in my, my learning chair upstairs later today. Okay, so uh, what we are what are we working on today? We're doing a lot of testing, uh, which means that we're doing a lot of TypeScript today on a Rust code base. So that's a lot of fun, right? Um, this is a web application that we're building, and the web application itself is all in Rust. We're using the U... Uh, front end framework, uh, and we're uh, everything is looking good so far. But we kind of want to automatically test it. So this is called Playwright. It's an automatic testing uh, system framework. Something. Uh, it's very similar to Cypress and Selenium. If you've ever used those things, except I would say that it's um, it's basically not in the same universe as Selenium, and it's better than Cypress. Uh, these days. So that's uh, that's what I go for. And yes, also cat. So be hi if you want. Um so yeah, that's what we've been working on today and trying to figure out like how to how to click all the things and then make it do do the stuff. In previous days, we've gone through and we've tested uh, from like a visitor's point of view. So somebody who is not logged in doesn't have an account. Somebody who has logged in as a learner. So that's uh, that's like you know just the the basic user. And then now we're working on author, which is what we would sometimes call admins and other applications. Also, I didn't really go through what the app is. Um, so this is an LMS. It's a learning management system, uh, and it is. Um, I'm going to be the author for these, uh, and then uh, potentially anyone from the community or anybody else you know, outside of that who finds these uh, would potentially sign up and purchase courses to uh, to learn. So the idea would be I would write some courses, like here we have this really cool course three, um, and uh, oh, that's interesting. When I'm an author, I have missing user interface. We're going to get to that when we do the test for, for this page. Um, and then if you purchase it, you can then, uh, take the course and actually like read through it and do all, do all the fun things. So that's, uh, that's what this is all going to be all, uh, that's what this entire thing is all about. So I'm going to be teaching the first course I'm going to be teaching is going to be an Axum course, uh, for backend programming. Um, then after that, we're going to sort of figure out where things are. Uh, might be you, I might go into some other ones. It sort of depends upon what uh, what the demand is, what people really want, what people really need. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, with that, let's uh, jump back into the testing. So currently I am attempting to find this long article here and click on it. And then I specifically want to like, as as my as a user, uh, I want to look at this and say, "Ooh, I have this long article over in all articles here. I want to now assign this long article to this course." So therefore, I want to click on it only if it's over here, and that's what I'm trying to find is uh, a way page get by role, and so then it's get by role button is not working. So I think I need to go look at some uh, some documentation for this. Uh, let's see. What's so enjoyable about Rust? You're really unfamiliar with it. Um, I think 
What's enjoyable for me for Rust is it's different. It's got a really strong type system. And I, while there's like more, more programming as in like more keys that need to be pressed for, to get stuff done. I feel that it's when it's done, it's like a lot more chance of being done right then as opposed to like, okay, yeah, I think it's done, but really I need to come back and redo that or like change it around later to like actually just make it work. Uh, and then there's a puzzle element to it too, because like the the entire memory management thing is just it's it's the same as everything else, but it enforces in a slightly different way, and so it it feels like a puzzle a little bit more than other languages. Like I with with um, JavaScript, it actually does feel more like scripting, where I'm just writing what I want to happen top to bottom and uh, just calling functions and doing all the the fun stuff. Is it as low level as C++? Uh, I guess it also depends, like, yes. Some people might like argue that, that even C++ isn't low level, but let's, let's say that may, maybe, a, maybe a better way, I'm, I'm gonna maybe not answer the exact same question, but maybe I will, I'm not sure. Let me know if this like answers what you're really going after. Uh, Rust, is considered a um a systems language just the same as c plus plus with the definition of systems language in this case being a language that is attempting to run as fast as possible so javascript not a systems language that's not its concern to run as fast as possible uh, but c plus plus is c is Rust is. So in that case, whatever I do is attempting to compile into something that runs as fast as possible. To be fair, when the term low and high level was coined, C was high because it wasn't assembly. Exactly. And I still see people on forums online make that argument to, to students who then come back and parrot it around saying like, well, you know... Rust can't be high level because it's higher than assembly. It's like, well, okay. That's sort of like, it is sort of like the argument of like, well, you have a supercomputer in your pocket because the definition of supercomputer as defined in the eighties is anything bigger than like, you know, X processor, which now means that literally every computer is a supercomputer and therefore making the entire term completely pointless. The definitions have clearly drifted. Yes, exactly. So as long, uh, and, and I guess like that's the reason, that's the teacher in me coming out to like define, to answer that question, uh, Kevin. Uh, I think because I want to make sure, <laughs> I needed to make sure that we have a shared definition. So that way uh, we can, uh, I can make sure that you get what I'm trying to say and we don't fall into the tr the trap of like, I answer this, but you heard this. Um, that being said, Rust has learned from a lot of JavaScript and Python and uh, C Sharp and Java and everything else and C++ and have created a lot of what we would consider now high level abstractions, uh, but compile away into like that low level, um, super fast running um, assembly. So we we basically get to have our cake and eat it too in in rust the cpu in your usb charger a common arm is more powerful than the computer in the moonlander in 1969 and uh that ran a radar dish yes <laughs> that is it's 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 funny how that works it um have any of you read any of the old Isaac Asimov Foundation uh, books? That may be way too old for a lot of us. But uh, a, clear, a clear part of that was the minification of things. Um, the author Isaac Asimov went, went a little bit more, a little bit farther. So we haven't reached that le level yet. He, he, also, he, he also went into minification for... Um, 
uh, not just like processors, but like energy sources. So it's like, okay, well, here's this magical tablet, um, tablet, uh, magical amulet. And uh, you wear it around your neck and it just, it does something for you. And it's like, well, what power is it? Oh, nothing. It's just magic. It just pulls energy from the air. It's like, no, no, it's a nuclear generator inside of there. It's just really small. Can it be used for LLM and neural networks? Yes. So uh, think of Rust as any other language. And so I, I think this is where the magic of Rust comes in, uh, is you can use it as if it's JavaScript, Python, Java. You can use it as any generic programming language. And generic being, hey, it can be used for any purpose, right? Like it can do anything that you want. But... Um, it, uh, uh, I don't know if there's a but there. It's like, no, you can just use it for anything. So yes, you can do it for LLM. You can do it for neural networks. You can do it for all that stuff. Yes. I don't think there's a but. <laughs> um, the but would be, it's a new language. So you have to learn it. Like that's the, that's the negative is that, um, if, if you're using this for work and you have a deadline coming up, using a new thing is not necessarily the best idea. Sometimes it is, but not necessarily. Stacking, hello. You've been looking for a good Ambulate in Diablo 4. Can, uh, can I have that one? Um, yes. Okay, so what, what am I looking for? I am looking for, all right, I wanna go to Playwright. Uh, no deadline, so not a negative for you. So perfect, yeah. So the big thing is like, I'm also a manager at work. So I have, I, I sometimes take uh, like work related things and business like sort of projects and goals and sort of like put on my manager hat and think about like problems and languages from that angle. And it makes things really interesting for how to, how to choose languages and frameworks and everything else, because it's not, it's not always clear cut that the best language for the job may not be the best choice for the whatever thing you're trying to solve problem. Uh, all right, so I want to look for grouping children. Uh, oh, I want a locator. So it's a locator. And then I want to like go into children. So maybe we'll go to just locators first. Filter by child descendant. Yeah, so I want something like this. Okay, so, oh, it's this filter thing. I forgot about that. Okay, so I get by role, list item. Oh, which would be this an ally. So list item. So get by, get by this thing. And then I filter. And then I can do another get by roll. So that's the difference. So I want to do get by roll heading that has the name all articles. Ooh, can I do parent? I don't think I can do a parent. So, uh, okay, so when I should get by role, heading articles. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so get the heading, all articles, and then I guess we have a filter. Filter has these optional options oh okay so i can get okay heading
put that in there. So you're not happy with this? Has text. Okay, so has text all articles. And then I can do get by role button that has this long article. Click that. I then go here. So get by role heading. So we'll do another filter. Uh, we'll do a has text signed. Then we'll get this button that has long article and we'll check to see if it's visible over there now. Uh, you were asking to talk about the same thing, but you're curious on my perspective. Do you think leap code is useful or should I practice dynamic programming in some other way? What is your goal? Like what's the, what's the start? Uh, a useful thing that I found in life is just start with the end in mind. Where do you want to get to? And that and then work backwards from there. So uh, for example, if if it's you want to get a job, so like, okay, I have I have gotten a job uh, as a software developer doing web development. How did I get here? And then and then it might like make more sense. It's like then backwards from that would be like, well, I passed the interview, right? Well, what was on the interview? And if, if leap code is on that path because like, oh, it, it directly solved a problem that I needed for that path, then leap code is the best thing. Uh, if it's like, ooh, actually they really wanted me to um, show a project that I was working on, then leap code is probably not that, but actually building a project for a portfolio. And possibly the answer might be both, where it's like, okay, a little bit of leap code, a little bit of project or something else. Um, so does that help? I know it's kind of not really an answer where I'm not giving you the answer, but I'm, I'm trying to give you like maybe a way to get the answer. It's Russian chess grandmasters used to do the same thing in the 1900s. I thought, I thought that's how all, I thought that's how they all did it. It was like, figure out like, okay, I want to get to here. How do I get there? But okay, um, yeah, then great. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. And hopefully wherever you want to get to, you'll, you'll be able to get there. Uh, let's see, so expect that. Okay, I need to, I need to run this. The fact that the the screen is blank is not not a great sign. No, uh, angry moose on a loose. Hello, no longer sure if cat or capybara. It's I wish I wish the cable for the uh, the camera was longer. Otherwise, I could pick it up and and like show it from the other point of view, because I don't know. Zilby's face is the cutest, and he loves facing the door when he lies here. So oftentimes, all you end up getting seen on stream is his back. So the answer is yes, still. Disturbing pets is a criminal offense either way. That that does feel like true. He he makes this really cute annoying sound, annoyed sound whenever I like pet him when he's sleeping. So he um uh and then he does like the slow blinks right afterwards. So it's almost like, what the Ugh, okay, I you know, I'm okay with you. I'm okay with you. Let me go back to sleep. So what happens here? Uh, we get to here. So we go there, route fulfill, request header value, route fulfill. OK. 
Okay, so that's all part of the intercept stuff. Get by roll. Okay, so I'm attempting to just get this long article. Page get by roll heading. Assess this all articles. Get by roll button, name long article. And then I want to click it. Timeout exceeded. The burp sound? Yeah, I think I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. At this moment, my only goal is getting a good grasp of the underlying patterns. You're very new to software engineering. And you're starting a computer science major in a few months. Um, yeah, I think I think focusing on having fun with code and playing with it. It's it's really weird because like it's um don't don't die. Um so programming is so weird because it there's so many similarities to like physical construction. Like we use Legos as examples, we use like building buildings and architecture and like construction as examples. Um but it's not real. Like you can't touch anything that you're doing. And so therefore like it it in in like if if I were to suggest to you, hey, you want to take like a let's say you want to take a uh, the equivalent of a computer science major, you want to take a Lego major, then the suggestion would be like, well, play with Legos, right? But not just not don't just build sets, like actually take them apart and just play with them. Build something that doesn't have any kind of you know instruction to it. Just build what you want to understand how how like patterns of pieces that move together but don't like really rely upon other people telling it to you just sort of try to understand that on your own it's not as easy to do that in programming because you can't actually just see it so that's the best thing that i can suggest is like try to just play with code if you have any questions any assumptions at all Try to note down, ooh, I'm assuming that that's how you have to do things in programming because that's just what the blog says. Uh, but no, it's like, okay, well, what happens if I don't do that? Does it literally explode my computer? And the answer is almost always no. You might infinite loop and have to reboot your computer, but generally speaking, you won't blow up your computer. Uh, Diablo, um, well, Thanks for uh, hanging out uh, and uh, I guess um, pretending to be productive. Um, good luck and uh, hope hope that we're productive. Um, if you're Kevin, if you're gonna do JavaScript, one of my favorite tricks that I did when I was learning, uh, and I'll I'll show you I'll show you what I did. And it's part of this learning thing. And it is it is really kind of like fun. And um, to anybody who knows what they're doing, it's like, it's, it's kind of like scary. It's like, what's going to happen if I do this? It's like, okay. So JavaScript, the language, uh, you can just update it here and just do whatever you want. So what would happen if I, I don't know, replaced, um, just like replaced fine. So I can do things like, what if I do delete object dot fine, uh, object dot, let's see, what are these things? Uh, let's object dot. Let's like uh, take object.keys. Let's delete that. Um, and now if I try to do stuff with with um, with this, does it still work? Can I still do a like, you know, uh, bar my obj. So if I do that, can I still do a for loop over it? I don't know. Let's find out. So for let I 
uh, equal. So I want that to four in. So I equals. This is gonna be what? Um, a four let. See four in. So I in. Uh, my obj. I console dot log. Hi. Yeah, still works. Okay, so deleting the keys doesn't like it's not using keys behind the scenes now for for something like that. So, uh, well, that's fine. And uh, maybe I can just keep on deleting stuff until eventually it doesn't work anymore. And it's like, ooh, okay, it uses that behind the scenes. Uh, you kind of wasted so much time in university. You would unironically advise to think which subgenre of programming you like the most, and then try to grandmaster it as fast as possible. Ultimately, before graduating, but finding what gives you drive is the hardest part. That is like that is truth in life. For in or for of the one I want is always the second one you try. Um, the way the way my brain works and it doesn't i don't know i don't, it doesn't um doesn't really click with with most students that i try to teach this to they ha everybody has to figure out their own way but i remember at as in starts in is on the left and of is on the right i think it's because uh i is before o in um in the alphabet so it it just like okay is there so in is always the keys and of is always the values. That's that's it. So if you're looping through an array, 99.99% of the time you want an of because you want the values. You don't want the keys, which would be the index in that case. Uh, in an object, it's a little bit harder to tell. Sometimes you want the keys because it's really important what that key is. And sometimes you don't care about that and you just want to loop through the values. In that case, it's enough. Then, of course, we can jump back into um, Rust and you get that choice because you can use enumerate and you just get what you want. All right, so let's maybe try a different one. So instead of get by role, we'll get by text. Oh, hmm. No, I think I do want get by. Okay, so I do want get by roll heading. Then I want to filter that the heading has all articles, right? That's how it works. So filter Oh, then I can do this heading. Oh, has. Okay. So instead of has text. So list item. So get by the list item. So that gets both of these. Has page get by role heading product two. Okay, and then, okay, so maybe that's better. So let's try this again. So I want to do wait page dot get by role heading. 
onto filter. Uh, but we're going to use has this time. Has is another locator. So this is now going to be, um, I don't need to await this. It's going to be page dot get by, right? It's get, yeah, another page, get by, get by role. So get by, get by role. heading with the name. Oh, in this case, I can just get by text, right? Okay, so it has that get by text. Uh, this is gonna be all articles. And then I want to get by roll button with the name uh, long article. And then I want to click that. And that's that one. Um, Arcane Soul, uh, which is, is that, well, it's not SSL. So it's Arkansas. Uh, hello, or happy Friday indeed. Yes, Friday is always good. Uh, can I elaborate on the ownership and borrowing concept of Rust? Yes. So it's um, it's part of something that like should be done in in programming type things, but obviously we don't always do it all the time. So. Oh, it's two in the Roman number. Okay, so it looks like two L's, but totally makes sense. Okay, so Arcan, Arcanes two, Arcanes two. Um, okay, so imagine, imagine that we have Zilby here. Uh, so Zilby, um, wants a toy, and I have, I have a toy, and, um. I want to let him play with this toy if I give it to him. And like, think about like, think about this from like an actual, like physical, I have something point of view. If I hand it to him, I have given him the toy. I no longer have it. I cannot change it anymore. So like, if I wanted to like paint it a different color, if I wanted to uh, do anything to it whatsoever, I can't do anymore. I can't even read it anymore. I've given it to him. It is not mine. Uh, even if, even if like in, in human speak, we would say that I own it and I have like lent it. Well, let's just say it. Like that, that's giving it to him. So like that's, he now owns it essentially. I may have like a label saying this is where it goes in my house. And that's like the variable that I have, but it's not there anymore. It's, it's an empty space on the wall. Uh, and then when Zilby is done with it, Zilby can give it back to me, but Zilby is a cat. So Zilby is probably just going to leave it somewhere and then the uh, the function ends and the, the Roomba will come by, sweep it up, and it, it's gone forever. So it's uh, it gets it gets basically the equivalent of garbage collected and it's gone. It's gone. It's dead. Um, but Zilby can give it back to me. And now I own it again, and it's mine. Uh, the rest of the stuff is all a little bit weird, and it's, it's harder to like give uh, any kind of um, physical uh, examples to. It's like, okay, here you can have this, but I also I own it. I'm gonna give you a magical link to it, and you can read it and see it. Uh, but I still like have the ownership, like I still have it. Uh, and so that's like read only. So like that's giving somebody uh, in Rust a, uh, just a single ampersand on it. So it's the, I'm giving them um, a, a why, why did I suddenly just forget all of the terminology to everything? That's, um,
Can we can we explain all of competing with a cat? Um, yes. The moment you return it, it snaps to baseline. Basically, it depends, right? It's like if you return it, it returns like it's given to somebody else. So like, if if we do like the good old YouTube thing, except I don't I don't do jump cuts here in Twitch, but um, if like we have here's me and I like. I give you this. And so like, you know, okay, I take it. This me doesn't own it anymore. I have given it away. This me can do whatever I want to it. I can change it. I can just hold it forever. And I can like be like a golem and, and just like, no, it's mine. I'm going to go, you know, just do whatever I want. And, um, and then I, um, I come back to here and it's like, okay, are you done? And I say, yes, I am done. I am exiting my function. I am good to go. And I return the value back to you. I own it again. But if it says I am done, um, I don't return it or I return something else completely. Uh, I'm like, well, I like that ball, but it's gone forever now because it got thrown into the fires of Mount Doom. Thank you so much. Um, the oh reference that's what I was trying to think of the the word reference so like the references are get where things break down a little bit where I'm like okay here Zilby have a reference to a toy uh and Zilby can not play with the toy because if he was to to play with it that changes its like position in the world so that's like updating its properties so all Zilby can do is like look at the toy and uh, we all know that a cat doesn't want to just look at the toy so that would like zilby is going to just be like who cares about that uh, if i give him mutable reference to it only zilby can play with the toy i can't even play with the toy now but i own it and i've given him like the specter magical version of it he can play with it around uh and then when he's done with it it snaps back into my hand and i'm uh, i can now do it because he's finished looking at it does that does that help <laughs> i don't know if that helps i'm gonna have to work on the uh the borrowing um metaphors again all right i missed i missed them uh okay how do you make a cat thread safe um cats are thread safe already because they're single cats. And if you put a cat into a thread, it will just exist in that thread. The problem is when you start cloning cats or trying to get mutable references to cats. The don't do that because cats don't like that. I think a cat toy with a string might be better as an example. Hmm. Maybe. I think I think we have to go into like magic, but not the same way that we explain programming with magic normally. It's like, okay, there's like an illusion of a of a toy now. Maybe that could be it. That's the issue with cat. They're immutable by nature because every field is private and they don't allow you to, to borrow them. They're owned only. So yeah, it breaks down. Everything breaks down. They also have nine lifetimes. So programming is hard. Um, <laughs> um, they, they do, they do, properly self-handle that so you never have to reference the lifetimes yourself they borrow you instead that 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 does feel like that sometimes yeah and just like rust just because something is thread safe doesn't mean it won't come and hurt you when you don't play with it enough uh okay did did, did this work i don't know i don't did we try it i don't remember anymore This did not work as far as I can tell.
So I see the click, but... I don't think that it's doing what I want to do. So the click, I believe, is the asynchronous one, the asynchronous part of this. So what if I what if I do something like this? I say uh, const. Um, we have the. This is the um, available long article equals this, and then we can do. Um, await available long article and we'll click this. And maybe this will show me if the problem is actually on the click or the other one. Let, let's see if I break it out, that helps. Oh, it's still it's still waiting here on click. I wish okay, so I wish that there was a way for me to hover over like this and see like did it actually successfully find this thing here? I I'm thinking that the answer is no. And I get a timeout exceeded, but I don't. So it must not have found it. Okay, so let's let's um. Let's start slower. Okay, to sum it up from a newbie perspective. The moment you borrow it, you get to twist the syntax to your needs. This also makes it more low level because you have more range to play with. Or am I way off here? Uh, I think you might be, you might be um, combining some of the ideas of like let's 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 separate low level from like borrow checker type stuff. So borrow checker enables it to do like the more like high speed low level type things, but it's not the cause of it. Uh, so borrowing is really all about like. Um, Maybe maybe what we'll do is we'll go into like what's the point of it? Like what what's the reason why a borrow checker is like good? Uh and in this case it's the the language wants to have it's it's the entire have our cake and eat it too thing. Uh we want to be able to not have a garbage collector and also not have to manually memory manually manage memory in the same way that not having a garbage collector has to be done in every other language. Uh, and so the way to do that is like, if I have this thing and as soon as I'm done with it, if I don't hand it to somebody else, I want it to be destroyed from memory and freed up for the operating system to assign something else to that memory slot. But if I am going to start doing that, I suddenly need to now know, can I do that safely? And that's the borrow checker. That's that's the entire point is like, OK, can I delete this from memory or is it still being used by somebody else? And then the thread safe part of that is, hey, is multiple people using it at the same time? Because that's also not cool. Uh, and so like. They throw both the thread safe and the, you know, can I delete this from memory safe together into one thing, and that's borrow checker. And then that allows everything to compile into something that runs as fast as possible, which could be what we consider like low level or, you know, systems or, or something else like that. Okay, I'm going to start over this.
It gets even more complicated when you need to get a lock when doing multi-threading. Yes. It, um, I have not figured out good metaphors for any of this stuff yet, which is, which is good. Like, I'm glad we're able to talk about it because it gives me a chance to sort of force myself to think about it. Cause eventually I want to, I want to do a course on like how to program and then using Rust. Cause like, I don't, I don't agree with the idea that Rust isn't a good programming language for first time, but I do believe that we don't have good education material out there yet. Uh, so I'm like trying to figure out like, can I do it? Can I build it? I bet I can, but I just, I'm, I still have to figure some stuff out yet. All right. You think you got a slight grasp on what you're explaining, but maybe that's just the Dunning-Kruger effect at play. I mean, maybe. Uh, the the big thing is, is understanding. So like you can under, you can know it in like the way I'm explaining for like this one thing right here. Can you potentially explain it for something slightly different? So if I'm explaining it to you, like, yeah, you can parrot that back to me and sort of like, tell me more about it. If I were to give you a code example, could you trace the ownership for it? And then give a, give a, like a, um, yes, this will compile, you know, this will not compile without actually like a whiteboard ex uh, example. Um, that would be a test to see whether or not you understand it. You did an async web server library in Rust. It was challenging to build. Wait, you did an async web server from scratch in Rust? That's, uh, that is, I could imagine that being challenging. Um, okay, so I want to await. Oh, so let's, let's start with, let's just do this like one step at a time. We'll do const, um, this is gonna be the, uh, maybe I don't, I can do await page dot get by role. And I want heading. Okay, so if I just do that, I don't need to wait. Well, whatever. You're not gonna hurt it. I don't think it's gonna hurt it. Is it? Oh, this is not going to work because, okay, maybe I can click on it. Even though there's like no reason to click on the heading, maybe just doing that will show me where it's trying to click. Okay, resolve to three elements. So we have this course articles assigned and all articles. Okay, yep, HTTP 0.9, 1.0 compliant, 1.1 is a lot to consider. You tried to look for HTTP 2, but holy, I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even try that in like JavaScript or Python or anything else that like I'm, I like have more experience with. Um, it's, it's, that's a lot. But like for, I guess like for me, it's, um. I'm more interested in the end end goal anyway, so that kind of makes sense. But uh, yeah, I have all the respect to all the library creators out there who can like build things like Axum uh, or Actix Web and like build web servers that like are not just like work, but good and fast and consistent and then like built well enough that they can continue to add features to it. Ah, I just like all the respect for that. It does feel insane. Yeah, I did. Um, so I had a, I had a coworker that he did for like a few episodes, but he didn't, he didn't continue with it very long. 
he was going to do a web server from scratch in node uh using sort of like using express as a um a template sort of like going for that kind of thing and that was it was it was sort of like the um yeah it was going to be some like live streams where he just did that from scratch uh and that was that was going to be interesting but it it didn't continue for too long it is it is a very like big undertaking what was my first programming language There's so many like weird caveats to this too. It's like the absolute first programming language where I like entered in some code and it like did something would be basic. So my parents had a original IBM PC and when they like they let me use it. And back then the RAM chip, like the BIOS chip included basic the programming language. So you could just open up DOS, type basic, and just like program into it and just compile and run there. And so we got a book that was like, oh, build a game in basic. And it was like, I don't know, like that thick or so. And it would um it would let you build whatever you want. And um like you know, Pong and like some other weird games, and there's like a duck hunt type game, things like that. The old 10 print, hello, 20, go to 10. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That basic. And so that would be my first programming language. I had no clue what it was or how I was doing or what I was doing. If it broke, I didn't know what to do at all. So if it broke, instead of debugging it, I would just read line by line and compare with the book to see, well, okay, that character is different. I need to redo that one. But... um. It wasn't until I was in, I mean, I would say like in high school, I took a programming class for web. And so I learned a little bit of JavaScript there. So I, I didn't really like do programming on my own until like programming as we would like maybe define it now until like senior year in high school. And then in college, I attempted to do a computer science degree. I loved the web dev courses that were that we were doing. And then um, in computer science 101, we did, it was Java. And the instructor didn't like show us how to do anything in Java. I had never used Java before. I had never done a compiled language before. And the instructor's idea of like, the instructor was like one of those, the ones that like weeded out students who was like, okay, we, you know, you guys, a lot of students trying to take this. Let's weed the ones out that like, aren't really like, don't really have the, the gumption for this lifestyle. So we're just gonna have to tell them how to compile the programs. If they don't, if they don't know how to do that by week two, they don't deserve to be software developers. So um, I dropped out of that because I couldn't figure out how to compile it and uh, uh, did anthropology instead. And um, then became a systems administrator. And uh, then after working as a sysadmin for eight years, um, what the fuck is that mindset? Bad education is that mindset. It's a, um, it's unfortunately common in in certain old school teachers, just terrible, absolutely terrible. So I became a sysadmin and then eight years into that, I'm like, am I programming? I'm like having to open up C and like write shell scripts that are complex. And I write some Python and I, I took a, a Python for programmers course and I got an A in it from the local community college. Does that does that mean I know how to program? Uh, let's see. What branch of anthropology? I would say social, sociocultural. My, my thesis that I did for anthropology was uh, how to, like how programming affect, no. The role, like um, how 
how technology and computers like and how we act in it like how we don't act differently and we like take our proto mindset into there and i actually used runescape uh, as part of that so be hi you want to have your face showing um so yes but i also did like in in anthropology they pretty much have you take everything so i i took like a little bit of every single thing uh and then java i didn't really use java again and that that started my my track down hating java for most of my life uh but when i was i i did teach programming at a code school for three years and um I would do something for my students. Uh, oh, you want me to throw this for you? That is an example of me giving ownership to Zilby and Zilby just dropping it and say, nope, this gets, this go, go, goes away. It's destroyed forever. Um, yeah. I don't know what I was talking about anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, anthropology is a field you're really interested in. I recommend it. Anthropology is a great, it's like any of the, like the social uh, sciences I think are great because when we're working on like with people, which is kind of what we do every day, if you understand how we work at a more like fundamental level, it helps, it helps a lot. um people are so cool people people are cool and it's we're how we work is a really really fascinating topic because it's um and i think we're starting to understand this as like a culture and society now but we're so easily manipulated Uh, your school didn't have enough people wanting to do a computing class. You ended up writing a uh, visual basic cell macros in an IT class instead. I think it set you back a few years because you went into university thinking JavaScript is the best thing ever. And who wants those silly typed languages? That was me too for a while. It was, I mean, part of it was like everything Java is obviously terrible. It was because like, I didn't really like get the idea that the language could be not terrible if the teacher teaching it to me was was not terrible like maybe those things could be separated it's like no 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 everything java is absolutely terrible clearly um and then it didn't help that that was also the time where like java had and i was a system in uh a security vulnerability in the java runtime like every other day and so i was like okay well i have to drop everything i'm doing and update 100 computers because there's you know a java vulnerability again um so that was fun okay what am i okay so i get by roll And it's this, it's this one, right? So like, okay, maybe what I have to do is go by this. So I start with course articles. Okay, so let's do this. Get by role. Name. Course articles. Okay, so then I click that. Okay, so that's course articles. Now I want to go to all articles. So then I want, we're gonna filter with a has page dot, um, Uh, page dot get by role. Uh, and this is going to be a header heading with the name of all 
articles. Okay, so can I do that now? What I say about manipulation is so true, but that's because there's so much information that the human brain receives, which is processed subconsciously, like 99% of it. Yes. Um, yes, there's, there's more to it too. We are, and, and this is so from like, from anthropology type stuff, uh, some of it is like learning what, what animals do, like watch animals. And it's like, are we really different? in that way like what what makes what makes humans different than animals and like every once in a while they're like okay well ant humans can do this and they were like well we just found some animals that can do that it's like well okay fine animals can do that humans can do this and then it's like it's basically that entire mindset of well proven wrong let's try it again uh that mindset which i now have a word for which is growth mindset it's probably one of the most important mindsets to have is like okay get proven wrong try something else try it again works really well in programming uh but that's where we realize okay we're 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 like animal we're still animals and like if you can convince a cat which by the way Zilby's not here anymore so i'll turn off the camera uh, if you can convince a cat to like do like to uh, to always shake your hand or press a button before eating or when they want to eat, they don't know why they're doing it, but they they feel they now have to think like a Pavlov type thing, except before the thing instead of after. Then um, that's manipulation. I manipulate the cat to press a button to tell me when to get food. Uh, the we it happens to us too like people people others do that to us we do it to ourselves um when it's good for good purposes i don't really have a problem with that when it's for dark patterns i have a big problem with that you're more interested in gender sexuality and family interactions like how everything works together and it creates a society um Oh yeah, like there's there's I, I did take um I went to university in Oregon and there's there there was several different uh Native American instructors that I had that um went into that. I was able to talk with them a lot. It was pretty it was pretty interesting. I, I love that. People like to see humans as something separate of nature, but that's not a view you you, you subscribe to. It's um it's it's helpful to like remember we're all part of nature and that we have um I, I remember reading reading something where it's like okay humans don't have instincts anymore. Like animals have instincts, humans have like other things. It's like, well, I don't think that's true. We have instincts. Anthropocentrism is a big issue. I have a red thing by Carl Jung. I have. Um, I don't remember anymore what I read. I do. I probably remember some of like the bigger points, but not like the specifics anymore. But yes, I have read from Carl Jung. And some of the other, uh, the bigger um, uh, psychologists in, in that sort of era. All right, so this did not work. Um, so filter, I wanted to now click on this. That didn't, that didn't do it. So filter. Oh, I wonder if I want to do this instead. Okay, so I paid for your roll heading. So what if I delete that filter is oh so what if i didn't do this as has text all articles 
what if I need a another um get by get by roll heading that will probably now be two right this will yell at me saying there's two of them So before it yelled at me that there's three, and now there should be two assigned in all articles. That's my that's my theory. But it looks like it's timing out instead. Portland, Oregon feels like it's quite something i don't hear about the city often but when you do it's always quite something i've been there a few times um i went to university of oregon which is in eugene uh which is a little bit farther away from from portland so it like didn't really get to portland very often only when i wanted to go to the airport uh it's it's a super like portland has a has a reputation of being a see hipster city back when hipster was like a big thing. Oregon Ducks, yep, go Ducks. Uh but besides that, I don't like it rains a lot, it's cold, it's like it gets sunny, like super sunny for like the summer. And then it's like, um, then it's like stereotypical, like English weather, like never been, never been to England, but like, that's the stereotype. So it's like, I'm just going to go with that, uh, the rest of the year. And I guess also they're really well known for public um, transport because like the few times I've been there, they had buses and trains that just took you everywhere. And it was, it was really good. Um, Arkans too. Um, Arkanes. Uh, thank you so much. And also, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Gophers are fine. Uh, and have, have a good rest of your weekend. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And I completely missed that other thing. Yeah. I, I try to be interactive with chat. Like it's, um, it's one of the things where like on weekends I don't do streams and, uh, I, I would do work on my project and other stuff. So I have, I have more time to like do this on the weekend. So it's, it's not a problem to be interactive on chat. I, I enjoy it. So this didn't work the way I expected it to. So, um, Get by roll heading, get all the articles, and they get a heading and click, and then it's like timeout exceeded. Urgh. And here I derail the stream with anthropology. Oh, it's fine. Is it really derailed? It had to be on the rails to be derailed. Okay, so this is, get this one here. So I have to get a parent one and then I can filter by a child. Oh, and then I get a button. Okay, so that you have this child and then I get a button. Maybe the, okay, so I need maybe a, Let's log in again and go and inspect. I'm I'm looking at this the wrong way. So I have this container that contains it all. I have this class row. Oh, so finding this one will hurt because it's not a child of it. I want this thing that has a class container. Uh, 
Oh, so that's that's the problem. Is I don't have anything that surrounds both of them besides this container. That's why it doesn't work. It feels like Oregon has become the new Cali, like Valve, Amazon are all there. Well, Amazon's been there forever. Um, but I haven't been in Oregon in many years, so I don't know how it's changed. And even when I was there, I was in Eugene, a very small town. Okay, so I want to await page dot. Hmm. I don't have a test ID or anything else like that. I feel like I need to make a change to the code to put something around here. Hey, Zilby, you're back. And he once again wants to go into the closet. Hi, you want to come lay down again? A uh, small town, 175 people is a lot. I mean, is that what it is now? Okay. So it felt it felt small town. Felt university town. But like, it's one of those things where if you're there in the summer, yeah, it has a lot of people in the fall and the spring, but then in the summer, everybody goes home. And so, like, half the city is gone. Um. Okay, so I need to make... this row so i need to give a test id i think and so test id what do those look like look at by test ids oh uh i can look at it by css yeah it doesn't want me to use that so i should use a test id okay so Data dash test ID. All right, we're going to jump into Rust. Uh, this specific page is the course article. So I want to go to page course articles. I'm looking for this thing that holds both assigned and all articles underneath course articles. Uh, and so this is what this is what everything looks like. So this is you. This is a front-end framework written in, that um, we write Rust in, but then it just compiles into uh, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, all that fun stuff. Uh, it's pretty much exactly React, but in Rust. Uh, so there's some Rusty things to go in here, but for the most part, if you know React, you barely need to know Rust to build a program inside of this. So these are... Function components, they're literally the same as function components in React. Uh, and um, we even have like use states, like I have a use store that uses a uduck store, similar to Redux, um, use navigator. Uh, there are struct components, which are the equivalent of class components. Um, I try not to use them too often. I feel that the function components, I get everything I want out of them. Uh, okay, and we even have use effects for better or for worse. Okay, so here is our HTML. We have an HTML macro here. So here is that course article's title. Then I have a row. I have a column. And then I have assigned and then another column. So this, this right here is my is my shared is my shared thing um can i put a test id in you uh i don't know so this is a bb row i have a, a component library that i created let's see what happens so if i go into a row i have a class i think i want to put like a let's put a test id 
So let's do um, test ID. That's going to be an attribute value. This can be an option. An attribute value is a smart pointer, so I can clone it for free pretty much. Um, Steven, hello. Wait. Steven, you're you're the Steven that I remember, right? You're now Steven Ball Ball. Um hello. Uh do I ever dream about work? I mean, yes. I don't like to dream about work, but it happens. Wait. Oh, someone snitched your own name. Uh, I was I was wondering whether or not that was something like that was going to happen. But it wasn't me. So uh I'm surprised you were able to st uh, stay long enough with it. Um Okay, so Arkins, you're only familiar with Angular 2. Uh ang So the general ideas of like component base should be the same thing. Uh, the big difference is with Angular 2, you can do message passing where you can like emit a message and then you can jump to different components to sort of grab that. Uh, but with here, we have to, I have to like do a message up and then properties down. And that's pretty much it. I can kind of send a message out and skip different um, different components and like children and go to a different part of the application, but it's not quite as uh, not quite as easy. Uh, it is possible, but um, I have to use like agents and other stuff, and I don't I don't know. I haven't decided how I feel about that yet. So my, my messages have to sort of like go in line with the um, with the, the properties. But everything else is pretty much the same, uh, except you don't get quite as much given to you in the framework. You have to then do a lot yourself. So like with Angular, uh, I can do like what? NG4 and like you for loop over an array and just like do things for yourself. And here is like, nope, I've got to write a for loop. Uh, myself and like do all of that myself because that's that's react uh okay so i want let's do a test oh it's um it is data here i'll just do this data test id equals and then this will be props dot test ID and I have to clone that in. Otherwise it thinks I'm trying to move it, like move and like take the entire prop. So, okay. So that works here. Uh, for LMS, I now need to cargo Tamil and tell you, use stop, use net, use the local version. Uh, let's recompile. No, uh, not website, LMS. Recompile, we'll go to course articles. And now in this row, I can now do test ID equals. And then I want this to be, um, what do I want you to be? This is like the assigned our articles. I guess these are going to be um, articles. That's what I'm going to call it which now means that I can go to our spec. So get by test ID uh, articles. Then I can filter with a has page dot get by uh, get by role heading with the name, uh, all articles. Uh, and then I can do page, I get, oh, not page. Then it's just get by role, get by role button. 
with the name. Uh, this is long article. And I want to click that. Okay, let's see if that works. Yeah, NG, any of the directives are really good. Hey, I think, okay, that worked. I'm able to click long article. Excellent. And we can see what happens after that, which it's over here now. Uh, and we see this article added to course. So perfect. That's what I want to see here is I want to, okay. So glad we finally figured that out. Add article to course. So, okay. Next, uh, after I click on that, I want to now see that it's over on the left. So we're going to do a, um, I'm going to throw this into a variable just to make it a little bit simpler. Uh, this is going to be an assigned long article. Let's await. Okay, so we're going to do actually, it's not going to be an await in here. It's just a locator. So we're going to do page get by test ID. So it's the same thing. So articles, we're going to filter with the has page dot get by role heading the name uh, assigned. Um, then we're going to get by, which is really, okay. So then it's just this thing again. So I want to get by roll button, long article. And that, that's it. So I want to get you. And then I expect. That, so I have to await for uh, assigned long article is visible to be true, right. to be true. Okay, so I should see it there. All right. Uh-oh. Um, thug shaken, uh, hello. And have I read this? Uh, so sorry about that. Um, I have, I have a lot of, uh, different uh, links, um, like blocked because, well, I have, I have unknown links blocked because a lot of people have come in and done spam in the past. So, uh, only certain domains I allow in, uh, let's see. Have I read this Rust article? It discusses Rust Rise and how it got there. I found it a week ago and it's really great. So you should maybe take it out. I will add that to my list to check out. Um, so I have not read that. Uh, and sorry about the auto ban. Uh, I'm going to. Send that to myself over to, to my desktop, desktop articles to read. Okay. Come on. There we go. Okay. Uh, how do I deal with a manager who hates you? That's, um, that's tough. So first of all, the, the question is, do the, does the manager hate you or is it, is there some kind of like misunderstanding or is there something else going on? So that's like the very, the very first thing to do is like figure, figure out what's really happening behind the scenes. There's um, probably a lot of motion going on with this, so it's gonna be it's gonna be tricky. There's a couple books if you want to get into this, but um, is is 
Am I the manager in this situation? I'm not. I've I've been managers for some people, but um, the 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 end thing of it is you're gonna have to have a conversation with this person, and it's gonna be tough. So try your best to use any kind of like safety type language. So a book that I highly recommend is called Crucial Conversations. I have I have like three copies of this book. <laughs> I give it I give it away to people and like I highly recommend it to everybody who wants to get into any kind of like tough conversations. Um, there are strategies in there. Why is it? Oh, do I have it? I have my my thing mirrored, don't I? Uh, why did I mirror? Oh, I mirrored my thing so I could be facing my code. That's why. I remember now. I mirrored my camera. Uh, where's my camera? Can I like unmirror? Where's the mirror setting? Transform. Nope, that was not the right one. Um, flip. Okay. I needed to do horizon horizontal. Okay, well now I'm I'm facing the wrong direction, but that's ah, fine. So there. I'm facing the chat now. That's true. I can put it in the other corner, but like sometimes my code is over there. So like here we can we can put me over the left until for a little while. Um, but yes, so Crucial Conversations. It's an amazing book. It goes through scenarios and also gives you tools to use for de-escalating. And so uh, if, if you find that somebody is attacking you and like making, like being, um, being extremely negative, to you, uh, oftentimes it's a fear response. They're afraid of something. They may not be afraid of you, but they might. There's some fear somewhere in their life that is causing that. And so the question becomes: and yes, of course, their manager might be the best person to like go and do this, but that's not the situation you have. It's your it's your manager doing this to you. So this is something we call managing up, where now you get to be that manager who tells your manager, like, you know, all this, all this stuff. But it's, it's tough, right? Because they have the power dynamic over you. So you have to come at it from a very, um, it's going to feel political. You're going to have to just come at it very slowly, very carefully, uh, under, come at it from a, um, a curious point of view, uh, one where you're not assuming that they actually hate you, but maybe there's something else going on and it makes it look like they hate you. And if you can get that around in your brain, then you might be able to find out what the true source of the problem is and then attack that. And uh, if you can, so it's it, this is not easy in the least. Like this is really, really, really hard stuff to do. So like totally understand if like you can't end up doing this or if it fails. But like if you have somebody that, if you have a manager that hates you, might as well try because like that's going to be a living hell job to, to have anyways. So um, might as well try to do something about it. And uh, if you are able to like, find the source of the problem, you can convert that hate to your best ally. That's, that's the reward. That, that's, that's what's on the line here is that you could potentially convert this manager into being a great ally. Now, if, if the manager has a source of fear that neither of you can solve, or they just don't work with you at all. And like, you just can't get there. Then my, like after attempting a little bit, I would just say, you know what? 
at some point in time, if they're not going to work with you, you've got to you just leave. Go find a different manager to work for. Okay. What are we doing? We are... Okay, so this test is passing. Uh, so I have found this long article and we have done that. So that excellent. So that is... That is this. We can add an article to a course. So I want to do the same thing now. I want to do test. I want to... Um, oh, wait. I'm not done yet. Um, after I do that, I also want to so expect await page dot get by text. I want to see this article added to course. Article added to course is visible. to be true. So I want to see that message happen too. How do you explain during a job interview that you left your previous job because the manager was a prick and refused to communicate? You don't. Um, the, the, the entire job interview process is, is just filled with landmines. And oftentimes people are looking for reasons that you shouldn't get a job or get the job rather than why you should get the job. And so if you, if you start talking negative about it um, and remember, like remember how we like chatted a little bit about anthropology and like cultural and social stuff, this actually hits there because when you talk negative about somebody else, in a management position, especially if you're inter being interviewed by somebody in a management position, they're going to see themselves in that role that you're talking about. And almost subconsciously, they're going to be thinking that you're talking about them potentially in the future, but potentially just right then. It's, it's not going to work well at all. So I would just not go there. Uh, don't don't complain about the manager. Don't um, don't say anything negative about the previous job or like how they've refused to communicate. Instead, you have to like reach deep and find your inner politician and and uh, or or lawyer. Like depending upon which which of these directions, it's not really any difference here. Uh, and craft a statement that is honest, but doesn't say really anything. It just sounds good. So let's see. Okay. They refuse to communicate with you and they were a prick. Well, what's a, what's a way that we can like re restate that? Um, after working with my previous company for X years or for, for some time, I felt, you know, we both felt that, um, or like, I felt it was a good time to move in a different direction. Chantilly has a great idea. Ask chat TPT. The environment, um, The company started moving in a direction uh, and uh, in a direction and I really wanted my career and I, I, uh, I want my career to move more in a direction that your company is moving in. Bonus points if you can make this like a, a benefit for the other company. If you're the type of employee that doesn't want to be treated badly, that manager will probably think twice about employing you in indicative of the whole system, to be honest. It's um it's not necessarily that because like here here's the thing. Most managers, even the bad ones, don't 
think that they are abusing their employees. Like nobody, nobody wants to be the bad person. Nobody wants to be a bad manager. Uh, they are because they don't know what they're doing or they're afraid or something else is going on. And that's, I guess like that, that's the key there is like, they think that they're good or that at least they think that they're neutral at, at the worst usually. Exactly. Exactly. They don't know. And so because of that, it gets, it gets tough. Some are entirely aware of what they're doing and truly think that people below them are suckers, but those kind, I mean, they're rare enough that it's important for us not to assume that somebody is that type. Wait until they um, prove themselves. If they, if they out themselves, then like use every weapon in your disposal. So like, you know, this thing with crucial conversations, this can be used as a weapon against those type of people because most people are good. Even the people who might treat us pretty shitty are still think that they're good and trying to be good. And the worst thing that can happen to one of those other people is that they get outed to everybody else as to like their true, like what's really going on, what they really are. Uh, and they try to hide that. And that's why, that's why they'll do like so many meetings, like behind closed doors or like one on ones where they're going to be really shitty. And then they're just like perfectly fine in front of other people. So there, um, you can use, uh, there's certain communication techniques that will trap people in logical circles and they'll be forced to sort of like either agree with you publicly or, be forced to out you and I wouldn't do that unless you're unless you're willing to put yourself in a line of fire but if you're a manager I would say no that's your job do your job is to stand in front of your team and be in the line of fire and take that and block for the other team it's like that's what I do is like I sit there and if if somebody's going to come in and like be mean to my team, they have to deal with me first. And I'm not going to make it easy for them. If you're an individual contributor and you ever want to be a manager, now is the perfect time for you to practice these skills. Uh and um there's a it's, it's it can be it can be fun in in some ways and it's really stressful in other ways. It's it's a very it's a very interesting thing. Um, okay, so these tests are passing. So, okay, add an article to a course. Now I want to do the opposite. So I want to remove an article from a course. Okay, so where are we going to start? Um, we start over here. We have this created in a Heseris. Let's get that one. So we'll do, um, wait, page. Let's do this test by ID. This is articles. We'll filter with the has page dot. Okay, so then get by role header. With the name assigned. Okay, then we get that role button. With a name of created in Hasura. Is that all lowercase? That is. Uh, and then we click it. 
At one job interview, I said that I quit a job because it was always a mess. Equipment kept breaking down and nothing was done about it. Probably cost me the job, but no regret because the interviewer complained about young people having low work ethic and he corrected them. I've had no envy whatsoever. So that's a, so this is a really good point. If, if you absolutely are not going to get the job and you don't think that there's any possibility for what you're about to say to come back and bite you in the butt, feel free to just say what's on your mind. Um, as long as you're not like causing, like hurting and harming the interviewer, um, then I don't like complaining about your other job, like can be cathartic in a way. It's like, okay, let me just like, um, you're being paid your, your hourly wages or your, your, your salary to like sit here and let me complain about another job. I'm not going to get the job, but whatever, I get to complain to a stranger for like an hour and then I'm going to go off and go find a job that I actually do want. Um, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. If somebody was to like, if I was hiring somebody and they complained to me about their favorite one, of course, they're not going to get the job, but I'm going to like be a sympathetic ear for them because I understand where they're coming from. As long as they're like not mean uh, to me or they're not like going to say like, and now I'm going to go and do this to everybody else or whatever. Like I'm not going to go and like judge them for it. And if they come back after six months and they reapply and now they have a much better attitude, I'm going to now cons still consider them for hiring. The only objective is to be honest with them. You're in trying to diss your previous company. Yeah. So like, see if, if they can see that, that to me, isn't that much of a negative. It's, it's perfectly fine. But of course I'm pretty different. I'm not, I'm not, um, not what your average manager is these days. Unfortunately, that's what I've learned. Um, okay. So Page get by to go. We test that. So I click there and now I should find any other one. So I can actually combine this together with the other thing. So we can do expect, uh, we can do an await, uh, page get by test ID. So I want to do this entire thing again. So we have the assigned no articles. Uh, this is inside of here. So dot, um, Gonna filter with has page dot get by role heading with the name of all articles. Uh, let's see, do, do, do. um, and then I want dot get by role button uh, with the name of uh, what did what did we click on this was created in Hasura yeah created in Hasura uh, and then we want this to be is visible to be true. Uh, and then I also want this thing here. Okay, so now I can expect that article, I think article removed from I think it's removed, we're going to find out. Removed from course to be true. So let's, let's try that. Also kind of for testing the water to know if you can be honest with them or not. Of course, there's a correct way to be honest and direct, but if you can't, it saves you the bother working with them. It, um, they're one of my favorite ways of doing an interview, which is not really possible remote. I, it's, it's really only possible in person is the take them out to lunch, like take, take the candidate out to lunch, um, and just have a meal with them. Uh, and then what you can do is you chat about 
non-work related things, the um, uh, both of you relax and like turn off. Because like when you're interview, you're both highly aware that like this is an interview. I need to be on, and so we're like all of your senses are like completely firing like at max capacity it is there's a reason why we're exhausted after an hour of interviewing because you're on the entire time you're like every little noise everything else you are like you were paying attention to when you got to lunch that sort of turns off because you're used to that um and now and now you can find out what each other are like in a more real setting as opposed to like when you're on because it takes it takes a long time for that to come out otherwise and you're not going to get that during the interview yay playing social games like that but that's the problem is that you're not going to get that otherwise which is just it's just an unfortunate thing you'd hate that but what you love is to go on a walk with them to talk and exchange well i mean that's same thing same same exact thing um with the the added benefit of the of the restaurant slash bar side is i get to see how the candidate interacts with other people like um like the 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 server or the bartender or you know something else like that and uh if they're if they're negative or that they're, they're like you know yelling at them or being really like mean to them um but they're nice to me then it's like ooh ooh there's they're they're they let their guard down and they they're like that's what they really are but yes absolutely agree like it um interviewing is not a normal human interaction interviewing is all social games it's politics it is to try to find what is trying to ascertain what somebody is like and whether or not they're going to fit in with your team in like a very short period of time and therefore we have to go with games and and other things to to get that out because it's it's not easy hey this worked okay so i remove of course okay everything is good here and so then i want to be able to click save and then when i click save we're going to do a Okay, so when I click on save like this, this GraphQL thing will happen and it is an insert API. So API insert course articles. And so we can go and take a look at that here. So this is database mutations, API insert course articles. So I delete all the articles associated with the, the course, and then I insert new ones all in one statement. Then I need to create this. Okay, so go under GraphQL interceptor. Let's touch. This is going to be API inserts course articles, JSON. And getting these things out. So this is going to be different. You always try to have some fun during interviews, but I guess some interviewers hate me for that. It, um, I mean, in that case, like that's that that is a, just as much of you weeding out people that you don't want to work with 
as as something else. So like in that case, like yeah, have some fun. Like laughing Turner, if you is one of the best things you can possibly do. Like if you can get each other to laugh, that's like in my opinion, that's like an in. But like I, I definitely know one of my mentors said that he did an interview and at the end of it they told him, You're too loud. And it's just like well, I'm glad you figured that out. You'd hate me if I, you hired me and then you found out that I, I talk a lot and I joke, I crack jokes and yeah. Okay, uh, I need to, let's split this. So we're going to do, was it split? Horizontal is that way, vertical is that way, I think. That's what many people think. So it's um it's kind of funny how that sometimes ends up being like a a thing. Okay, so it is V split. Good. It's not like it can be helped, and it's also like that's that's one of the worst things to get hired into a company. You're like, can you just change who you are at a fundamental level to fit in? It's um, it's not cool at all. Uh, okay, end to end tests, GraphQL, the interceptor, and then I want the API insert course article. There it goes. Okay. So I have the data part first, then we're going to do this other stuff here. Not cool and it could be really dangerous. Absolutely. If, uh, if any of you are in a situation where you're not allowed to be who you are, or at least you feel you're not allowed to be who you are, it, um, or you're like going to take a job where like, okay, I can survive that for, for like a year. It's it's surprisingly dangerous. It it really like we can only take that for so long before it starts to affect us and like we just get depressed. It's it's rough. So like be really careful if you're gonna go into that situation. A camp house, hello. Uh how are you doing today? All right, so I want to go over here and let's, well, that's a choice. Uh, oh, come on, why can't I delete? Oh, could delete you. Uh, that word, that surround that. Okay, so in you, you're gonna get affected rows. Affected rows. Uh, let's just say that you deleted, I don't know. It doesn't, this literally doesn't matter what is. I just need to return to what I'm returning to make sure it knows what's happening. So let's, uh, for the delete, let's just say like, yeah, we deleted two. Um, and then the next one is gonna be that. Yank, go over here, paste that in. Okay, so then this is gonna be articles back. So this is gonna be an array of objects coming back in. So now, okay, I can now say, uh, I could probably just put in one. I probably can get away with just one. Doing fine, but it was a bit down this week. He got a job interview canceled after traveling uh, to their city. Like, did they invite you to the city? You travel there, and then they canceled. And now you're like stuck in the city. Um, I that sucks. I'm sorry about that. Are you? Um, I mean, it's just travel, right? It's not like you moved for the interview, and then there you go. So, like, uh, I mean. Any way to make it to like turn it around? 
like uh i don't know interviews are tough to get so it's hard to get like to do another interview there but maybe so did they cancel and like not pay you for the travel that is really bad i would not imagine i can't imagine doing that to somebody um we like yeah if if i if i canceled an interview and they had already booked travel i would still i would still like pay for that that is a major dick move. That is that is horrible. I am so sorry about that. And there's like not much you can do about it too. It's like, oh man, uh, I would I would put that company on my like personal blacklist and just have nothing to do with them anymore if I can. You know that's a good point. That is a really good point, Arkans. Send them an expense, just like, um, just like send them a bill. And like, if they don't pay, it's not like you're any worse than you are right now. And if they do, then it's like, it's better. Uh, So for the entire like extroverted, introverted, outgoing, not outgoing, like loud, not loud thing, um, it's, it's something, something that I, um, I, I learned a short while ago is when you're having a meeting, assume that there's one of everybody in, in the meeting and then give plenty of time for both types. So like, okay, we have a meeting, we're going to have like together talking and chatting and just like, you know, come up with ideas right together. And then, okay, we're going to have a five, 10 minute time. We're going to like, if we're remote cameras off, um, think about it. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back and like discuss again. Uh, anybody who is like more introverted or shy or just needs that like quiet time they'll have so many more things to share after that break break period. I mean, yes. So yes, campus, it doesn't matter. It's a, uh, it's, um, that is a, like it, it wouldn't matter if you, if it was a job for a 250 K salary, if like it was Google and they were saying, here's like, here's our like, you know, senior developer, 250 K a year job. And they didn't, they canceled and didn't pay for travel. I would be, I would be really pissed off. Even if I could afford it, it's the, it's the, it's the, um, principle of the matter is, is that's the thing. And so like, just, just like ask anyways. All right, so I'm going to be returning. Do I have to have the returning keyword in here? I don't know. Probably not. I uh, probably just need. Probably just need an article like that. And then that's going to have this created at. I'm using this as a string, so we'll just say, like, hey, this is 2023. Zero, what's today? Zero six, 30. Um, I don't care about the time for this one. ID, we'll just say this is ID one. Um, oh, wait, can't do that. We'll do ID one. Title, uh, the, um, inserted title. It doesn't really matter, I don't think content content is a single thing so content will have 
content, and then you're gonna be a string with something like, um, I don't know, title, um, I am an article, an ID of like, let's say one. Okay, so if I do something like that, let's see, let's see if that's good enough for this. I want to open up GraphQL Interceptor, import this in. It's API insert course articles from articles. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be you. So you're the only one that's going to do it. So it's going to be API insert course articles is API insert course articles. There you go. You should be happy. Being a manager sounds like a lot of fun. So being a manager can be a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun points to it. You know, one of the most, one of the best feelings of being a manager is creating a team that, like taking a bunch of people that don't know each other and then helping them become the best that they can possibly be, the best people that they can possibly be. And that's something that we can do as managers. This is within our power. The worst thing about being a manager is basically the end of a relationship. It's either you have to fire somebody because they're refusing to work together or worst case, they're being really, 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 really negative. Uh, the worst one is they're really good people. They work together really well and they just can't do the job. That sucks. I've had to do it in the past. Um, also worst, like along the worst things, layoffs. Let's say your company just isn't getting sales and has to do a layoff. As a manager, you have to tell them, I'm sorry, we love you. You do a really amazing work. We need you on this team. We literally can't afford to pay your paycheck. I'm sorry. And that, yeah, that's like, that's the sucky part. And then, um, uh, Diablo, hello. Yes, uh, I changed my schedule. So I now do long streams in the morning from 6 a.m. Mountain Time until around 8.45 a.m. So we're coming out of like 15 minutes left or so. But yeah, I'm still streaming. Working to start up with two other devs means almost no management. Yeah, I mean, management changes. Like the, I, I, I don't like really big companies. So I, I'm not, I, I don't know what management is like in a really big company and I don't really care to find out too much. Uh, but I, I'm really good at like uh, small, at tiny and small. That's, that's what I do. And I, I also do a lot of like outward sort of, I affecting, I don't only affect my own team. I affect the entire company is usually what I do. Um, so the big thing, Arkans, if you if you want to go into that, here's here's the really like interesting part of that is like, yeah, we have that ouch thing. You cannot allow the fear of having to terminate someone or lay off lay them off or something else like that to prevent you from having a good relationship with your team. Therefore, you have to like be friends with them essentially, or like get that sort of like that kind of good relationship without like, yes, it makes it more painful later if that happens, but you can't, you can't just say like, well, I'm not going to get close to them because what if I have to fire them? That's a terrible thing to do. You need to be close to them in order to help them be the best that they are. Not too fond of the worst part. 
but the good part sounds like kind of stuff you would love to do. That's the thing is like nobody is fond. Of, if if somebody is fond of letting somebody go, that is a terrible person. <laughs> don't don't I don't want to work with them. The faceless Karen in HR fires people. Yeah. I mean, I will be in the room as an advocate for that person when the faceless person in HR fires them. Because I will not let them be alone. Uh, it's like, you have, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. But like, I have in the past, like, ha been forced to lay off somebody. And they ask, can we still like, can we still hang out every once in a while? I'm like, okay, I think I did something right. And then I work, I do my absolute best that they can still find a job as quickly as possible afterwards. That's, that's the big thing. It's like, keep that relationship going. Uh, do everything you can to like, give them, give them what they, give them what they can. You hate HR, they're good people, but you hate HR. The, you can hate the department, and and be perfectly fine with the people inside the department. Am I um am I peaking? I feel like my mic is a little bit louder than it normally is right now. Hate the game but not the player. I think Yeah, that can work. In in some cases, the game has just unfortunate side effects. Like if it's like you don't have to hate the game if you just lost the game. Like if you if you get a team together and your your company isn't making money and so you have to like lay off a bunch of people, but it's like I'm not thinking like that type of layoff is not the same as like when when Google does a layoff and then does a huge stock buyback and like makes a ton of money and has unprecedented um, profits. And they're like, hey, we had to lay people off. It's like, did you? Did you? And then um, another company is like, we had to lay people off because we literally couldn't afford to pay everybody. Those are different situations. Not going to lie, not too fond of hanging out with coworkers after work. It's perhaps necessary, but it feels like crossing a boundary. I am not fond of enforced hanging out with coworkers after work. Uh, there was a few times at my day job where people are like, we need to do more like hanging out things. Let's set up like game nights where you do gaming after work. And so one of, one of the things that I did was I rearranged our meeting structure uh, and then on every other Friday, we were done at 2 p.m. And I'm like, okay, every other Friday from 2 to 5 is hang out and play games. That's what we're going to do. It's a during work, hang out and play games time. Uh, and so that's, that's like, that's what a good manager can do is like figure out like, okay, it sucks to like enforce hang out after work. So let's make it during work. Now, some of them will continue to hang out after work, but I want to make sure that people with families, people on the East Coast, other people can like participate. And uh, that's um, only a manager is going to be able to do that. Like an employee is not going to be able to rearrange everybody's meetings. You're probably a better manager. You let employees work without dragging them to meetings ever. That's not necessarily a bad manager. Uh, the manager's job is to make sure that the work gets done. And if it, okay, so if a meeting, if a meeting's not happening and the work is getting done, did that meeting really need to happen? As a manager, my job would be, I'm going to cancel that meeting and make sure it doesn't happen. If the work isn't getting done because the the team members needed to talk to each other, but weren't talking to each other. Okay, I need to have a conversation with them. Why aren't you chatting with each other? Um, how do you handle employees that aren't comfortable doing game afternoon? Try to find different 
things that they can do. Uh, not every activity everybody's going to do. So like some of them are going to be in for games. Some of them want to hang out and just have a drink. Some of them want to go for a hike outside. Um, I am now of the opinion that not everybody needs to hang out with everybody all the time in the single in the single meeting. It just needs to be every once in a while, chat with each other and like have some kind of interaction. Uh, if you're all together, a lunch is amazing. Just go out and have lunch and just chat. Yeah, and then like if if they're all now this was remote, so remote's so much easier for this than for um than for for going home type thing. I think like the big the big thing that some people don't get is like that is work. Like the the hanging out with each other is work. So like I might have a conversation with them, just say like, hey, it may feel like we're not doing work work, but we're doing we're doing team building without and without doing one of those like the team building exercises like i'm not taking you all out and making you do trust files and like running through mud in like you know some kind of like you know event that we paid for this is just as valuable as that but it doesn't feel like it uh that being said it's it's required that's why it's during working hours i'm paying you for it come on You can handle it for once every two weeks for three hours. And the thing is, like, when you're playing games, you don't even have to talk to people that much. That's the best thing. You hate meetings. It's such a bad way to communicate technical issues. It's, um, that's where I would say, let's, uh, uh, well, okay. As a manager, here's here's how I would I would respond to it. It's like, okay, what um, what would you suggest? I would I would basically say like, I'm not going to make a decision on changing this. What works for you? What works for the team? It can be video games. Um, it can be other stuff. I'm a big believer in in using some kind of tool to fill up the space so you're not just all staring at each other during during chatting time. You're going to play just dance and you're going to like it. Oh god. Um you'll murder them all unless it's co-op and then you'll carry the team. So uh I've not I try to play, I try to make it be um, games you're playing with each other as opposed to against each other when possible. So there is, um, see, what was, oh, whoa, I, and, oh, I don't have, I don't have everything set up on it. Um, Mark something. There was a, a great, a great game, and by great, I'm being only slightly sarcastic. Uh, I now need to go find my my Steam. Uh, where's my library? Mark something. Um, oh, it's not my wish list. I might. I need just my full library. It's my. Where's my library of games? Oh, that's the store. Where did they change the okay there it is. I have to go to like the right. They changed like the the mobile thing. It's like M something, I wanna say. We haven't played in a while, but it was it was great. Okay, so things like Deep Rock Galactic is a great game for like a couple people together. Don't starve together. Uh do what else would be here? Um Factorio for engineers, maybe. Uh, even a game like Foxhole, uh, if you're you all choose and spawn in as the same team. 
a same a game where you're all on the same team. That's that's the that's the key. You're all on the same team. And that way if you're if you're carrying the entire team, everybody's cool with that. Mario Kart Yeah, Mario Kart can get can get tough. Muck. That's what it is. Okay, so there's a game called Muck, M-U-C-K, which is a hilariously interesting game. It was made by a person who was told, I believe you, I bet you can't make a survival game. And so he made it in a weekend. And um, yeah, that's, that's the game. It's free, which is the perfect price for any kind of required uh, work game is free. Or we're paying for it. Basically, like, company buys it for you. Um, other thing is, like, my company, my day job, we do a lot of VR stuff. So everybody has a VR headset. Any kind of VR game is in for that, too. And those are, those are great as well because we want people to get used to VR. Don't starve. You mean lock them in the office without food for a week? Yeah, exactly. You did 10,000 hours of competitive level quick one, quick one when you were younger and then moved to quick three. Headshotting people at extreme distance is exceptionally easy for you. Especially now with all the good mice we have now. Yeah. Um, so what's kind of fun is that if you play a, if you play a competitive game where you're all on the same team, being really good at something is, is actually a really interesting thing because everybody else sees you're really good at this. And there, this is one of the, um, this is one of the, the mind hacks. This is one of these social, like sort of things that may make people feel like a little bit iffy about this but if um if if somebody's with you in a social situation where they seen you at something you're really good at they're gonna start giving you the benefit of the doubt in everything else so if you're a software developer and you're chatting with a marketing person or an hr person or a salesperson and they see you be really good at something like you know, you go out and play billiards or you play darts or something like that. You're really good at that. They're going to, they're going to, um, suddenly like, oh, when you say that it's only going to take, it's, it's actually going to take a week to do it and not just one day. Okay. I trust you. That's going to start happening more often. So like there, there's a business, business reason for having these type of interactions. Don't be on your team, you'll insult you. Don't be on the other side and you'll insult you. Don't be on the game, I will insult you. The um, There is a certain amount of shit talking that you can do in, in a company environment. And it's perfectly fine. And there's a certain amount of that that like is actually healthy. At a certain point, it gets to be not healthy again. And, um, it's like, but that, that's the thing is like when you're on a team and you're like, if you're, if you're mobbing, like, let's say you're doing a pair programming exercise where there's like four or five people programming and somebody makes a mistake and like programs it, uh, everybody just being silent while they're like fixing their code. If like, if you can do a little like light teasing of somebody like that, that's perfectly fine. That's okay. Um, if, if you're like. Oh, come on. You don't even know how to type? Jeez. Who put a keyboard in front of you? I can't believe you got a job. Uh, that's, that's you know, moving into the not-so-good area. All right. Uh, let's see. It's 8.45. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I, did, I didn't even test this, so I need to... Um, we can run a test really quickly. 
just run this. I don't think I actually did anything with this. Oh, I need to click the save button. So let's um let's write at least one piece of code for no no don't want to do that. I uh, wanted to go there. Uh, so where's my spec course article spec? Okay, so let's write a uh, stub for this, and then next time uh, I'll finish this up so we can like save. So actually, it's probably both of these. I want to click save at the end of this. So like expect that, and then I want to do um, await page dot get by roll button with the name save. I want to click it. Uh, and then I want to expect await page dot get by text uh, saved somewhere in there. Um, uh, is visible. Uh, to be true. So I want something like that for both of these. All right, what's that? What's the chance that these work? The seven dirty words, the seven most dirty words spoken by you in the right context. That's OK. OK, so you're you're not happy. What happened? Error saving course articles. OK, so that's uh didn't didn't work. How about you? Probably the same thing. Hey, oh, no, wait, that. Remove from course that worked. I mean, well, something, did I like not click the button? Oh, I expect the save to be there. I didn't click the button. I need this thing too. That's why. So click the button and go with it. Okay. So that's probably the same thing. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, we've uh, successfully left ourselves in a broken state, which is really nice. Um, you're in a good place here. Let's go ahead. Uh, let's commit. We added a test ID to rows. And I'll go ahead and push you up. That is now this commit. Usually in Alacrity, when I highlight something, it automatically copies it. Okay, there it goes. Now I get the message. Uh, so over here, I want to go to our cargo.toml. And change you to that. Okay, so save you. We're good to go there. Let's quit everything. Uh, add. Okay, lock Tomal specs and JSON, all that stuff. Okay, so get commit. Uh, we are work in progress testing. Ah, I'm on the main branch. It'll be fine. I'm only updating the really like the testing stuff anyway. So like not really anything big. Uh, so testing. Uh, testing course articles. And then on Monday, when we come back and we continue this, I will run the tests uh, because I won't remember what we're doing. I'll run the tests and then there'll be those two errors. And it'll say like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Okay. I love how like 
I look over and now we're just talking about different types of insults that we're doing all the time. That's, um, love that. Okay, so I don't have anybody that I'm following that does like Rust code or anything else. Is there, um, is there anybody that uh, you want me to raid? Otherwise, I will, um, I'll go ahead and just end. You should stream more, but that just means you swear more. I mean, you don't have to swear, but if you do swear, you can make it interesting. And if not, it's not a bad problem. I'm the only one of us. Okay, so we'll just we'll just end here. Everybody, we can scatter to the winds and then go and join and find somebody that's streaming and have have fun there. Have a great rest of your Friday. As I mentioned, I do these streams every weekday morning starting around 6 a.m. Mountain Time. And uh, sometimes they go for longer and sometimes they don't because of, you know, reasons. So anyways, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you next time. Bye.